G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jono, thank you so much for joining me. Before we go any further, please hit like and subscribe, it helps me out so much. You can also head to my website, johnnysguitar.com.au for some Kemper profiles. Now, I'm gonna give my definitive thoughts and review as such on the EVH 5150 Iconic. It's not so iconic, but it might just be worth buying. When I first picked this amp up, uh, I did it for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to try it. But two, it was very cheap. Uh, even three, look, look, I don't normally do combos. I really don't like combos, but the um, heads weren't on sale. I found this combo on sale, um, hence why I picked it up. And when I first unboxed it and, and plugged it in for the first time, I thought, oh, yeah, that sounds all right. And uh, I was kind of determined to not I was determined to show that it's not a one-trick pony, but I've discovered along the way that there are a fair few limitations uh, that are in the design of the amp that kind of make it a one-trick pony, despite all the features. First of all, you can kind of look at this amp as kind of like a hybrid uh, in terms of, uh, yes, it's a tube amp, but um, it's essentially taking the EVH, the 5150 pedal, and using that as a whole pre-stage gain or pre-stage pre preamp as such um, and then going into a valve power amp. This will start to make a lot more sense once I tell you what the as a player like what the feeling around it is and where things are sitting in different spots than you would expect kind of points to this. The fact that there are not three preamp tubes uh, makes me think that there's a gain stage, a tube gain stage missing. Without that extra tube something else has got to be doing a lot of this work on the input and it's pretty much the circuitry of the pedal, the 5150 dual-sided pedal. So that's one way that they've kept costs down, uh, but engineering that in, um, I don't think it's really worked in a way that I would like it to as a player because it's putting things in weird spots. Brings me on to point number two. The noise gate doesn't... Um, it works, it works, but it doesn't work how you'd expect it. Um, I'll turn my guitar up now. We've got a bit of hum there, but if I turn the noise gate all the way up, it just kind of dulls it, it doesn't get rid of it. This is all the way off, all the way on. It's kind of just like changed the, uh, it's kind of like changed the cue of the EQ of that hum, <laughs> rather than actually taking it out. Um, now I am comparing that to the only other noise gate in an amp that I've had, which is the Engel um, Powerball, which was awesome. That will just cut everything, and then it'll open up really quick. It's brilliant, Engel are brilliant. So that's one thing, the noise gate doesn't work as I would expect it to. There are workarounds around it, obviously. You could put a noise gate pedal in front of it, you could just not worry about it, totally fine. That being said, it still doesn't work how I would expect it to. Next point is the, however they've had to make these two you know, a pedal kind of circuitry and a valve circuitry meet, uh, meet together means that you can't use it as just a power amp. So we can't bypass the preamp as we would with a normal effects, uh, with a normal tube amp that has an effects loop and just go into the effects return. Uh, you, you can, you can, and it does work, but it just neuters the volume. Uh, on any other amp here in this room that has an effects loop, head first with JCM 800, Right, if I go guitar into the effects return, it is full 100 watts, no mass, no no volume drop, nothing is nothing is hindering the volume, um, except it, it's just full open, right? Um, and with this, it's not. And again, I haven't encountered that before, um, and I wouldn't use the amp like this. But it's I'm drawing conclusion, I'm drawing points that just all add up to this amp just feeling really weird to have to play with. So, next point, so, um, 
So yes, that effects loop, not being able to have the full 60 watts at your disposal as a power amp, despite having the effects loop when you plug your guitar directly into the effects return, not great. Next point, the burn switch. Uh, it's just too much gain for the speakers. Um, and I'll demonstrate that now, actually. And we're not even gonna use the speakers. Um, this is just on channel two. Gains at 12 o'clock. Um, sounds like this. Now we're just taking the direct out from the back of the amp into Logic. Let's put the burn switch on. There are some aspects of that that I'm liking and then there's just too much bass. It's like whatever the burn is doing, it's just boosting way too much with the low end frequencies. I'd prefer just a mid boost. Or if it's like, if you're gonna do something like this, just, just make it a TS style circuit or whatever. Or if it had that extra tube in the preamp, you could kick that on, right? I know Engel do this as well. There's sometimes four or five preamp tubes in, in Engel amps that kick on when you want that extra boost. All the things I'm saying here are not to, to say that the amp is bad, I'm just, I'm, I'm making observations about how it's been put together because it's been put together at a price point and it's a good price point. Um, but I'm definitely, definitely going to say that I probably should have spent a bit more on going for the head, especially if I was gonna keep it. Probably not gonna keep it. All right, the reverb. Um, by far and away the worst digital reverb I've ever heard in my entire life. It just is. Um, and again, it's been built to a price point. So, look, to be honest, I'm not even gonna demonstrate it. Um, it's that bad. Uh, just don't use it at all. <clears throat> Couple of good things that it does have in the right spots, I feel, um, <laughs> is uh, the resonance and the presence are absolutely the last thing in the chain, as they should be on the master section, you would say. Um, that is a good thing, but nothing else seems to be in the right spot. Like going back to my point about the effects loop, the fact that you can't, uh, you don't get that full 60 watts when you plug your guitar into the effects return means that it's, it's routed somewhere differently or it sits somewhere differently in, in the circuit um, that a lot of people like myself might not expect. Clean tone, what do we think about it? It's fine. There is a big volume drop uh, if you don't have the gains or the volumes managed correctly, um, but uh, it's not bad. Um, but yeah, I just, if the reverb was better, I would use the clean channel more. However, the overdrive setting on the clean channel, quite good. got more of the flavor that I would be after uh, with that burn switch on channel two. It's just mid-rangey and it's punchy and it's, I think it sounds actually pretty good. But the reason why you buy the amp is not for that overdriven on a clean channel, it's for channel two. The track that you heard was recorded with the direct out on, uh, from the back of the amp, just XLR straight in, um, speakers turned off. Um, and yeah, look, it's just not a great emulation. Um, again, built to a price point. Um, I would much rather mic this amp up and then um, do a lot of EQ work on it or just mic it up properly, um, you know, go to town on it to try and get the best sound that you can. So I would not advise it uh, in using the direct out, even though you can play some studio magic and make it sound usable. So after I've just spent all this time kind of saying everything that's not great about it, um, I still probably think it's worth buying. And I'm gonna say who it's worth buying for and why they should buy it. 
This would be such a great amp for schools. Um, they're cheap, they are feature packed, they are loud, and they cater to just about everybody's playing style. And it gives you something that's different. It's not a, it's not a solid state amp that's 30 years old that you know, <laughs> you, you might see in, um, or that I used to play with at my, my schools um, growing up. Um, it is something of A quality that is good, that is you know, feature packed and can, really can appeal to a really wide range of students. So I think if I really, really dug the sound um, and you know, wanted to continue using that sort of sound in the long term, I'd go and buy a head um, and then find the best speaker combination for it. Definitely don't rate these speakers. However, these things, especially here in Australia, they're, pop, they're available right, and they're on sale regularly. Schools should be buying these left, right, and center because they would be great for just about every single student. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like and subscribe. It helps me out so much. You can also go to my website, johnnysguitar.com.au, for some camper profiles, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.